Allah forgive us. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, waited patiently. He kept on dedicatedly reminding the people to say, hang on, this is the path. This is Allah. This is the way. And he did not lose hope. And he continued the same message over and over again in different words. If you look at the reminder of Salah, how many times does it appear in the Quran? Anyone knows? Where Allah says, establish your Salah. We all know it's more than once. It's more than twice. It's quite a few times. The reason is Allah is telling you, hang on, there are so many different times and places in the Quran and wordings because one of them may affect you. As you're reading the Quran, we are taught to read it from cover to cover. Say, for example, and this is something unique to also taught by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hearts of the people are not the same every day and they fluctuate and change. So grab that heart when it's at a point where it is going to absorb what's coming in the direction of it in terms of spirituality in order to give it a good message so i give you an example you're busy reading the quran at the beginning of ramadan and mashallah you're excited and so on and you're reading the meaning of it and allah tells you to establish your salah establish your prayer and it didn't really hit you that much because as it is you're reading taraweeh and you're going on and on and on and then when it comes to the second half of ramadan you start softening up a bit because you know with us the month of ramadan you climax at the end right at the beginning everything is still okay i've got 29 days 28 days to go hey there's only six days to go let's get serious that's how ramadan is it's unique it's you know it's like a long race long race a marathon near the end everyone becomes more serious to say now we've got to win alhamdulillah not to say we weren't running at the beginning but to be honest as time passes you read it again there may come a time of the day that will be different there may come something that's happened in your day that particular day that has made you think from a different angle something that might have happened in your life that makes you feel this is the time for me to change this is the time for me to turn and then you turn and you only turned because that message was repeated in a different wording at a different time but it was the same message subhanallah if you ask yourself you know these Imams who come to talk to us, these scholars who come to talk to us, perhaps the halaqat that we have that are a reminder for us. If you ask yourself, what is the message? To be honest, it's always the same message. Always. It's telling you to get closer to Allah, to be, become a better person, to improve yourself, to worry about what's to come after death and so on. All of the messages are the same, but the way they're worded, different. The timings, different. I believe that there are certain times of the day when people are more receptive to religious instruction, perhaps. I believe perhaps like at this time here, the evening, early evening, it's a very blessed time. Early morning, very blessed time. You know, the early hours of the morning, subhanallah, you and Allah, imagine reading a book, listening to a talk, and suddenly it strikes a chord as they say, you changed. The same way you can change, have hope in the rest of the people, the rest of them. Everybody can change. That is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He always had hope. Let me give you another example. A companion we spoke about this morning by the name of Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, radiyallahu anhu. Powerful man. I'm sure we've heard his name. Okay. After the battle of Uhud and after the treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam called his brother who was already a Muslim and he was already in Medina and said, where is Khalid? Imagine the man is gone. He's in Mecca. The man is not even in Medina. The man just fought us. The man is part of the enemy. But the prophet peace be upon him is calling his brother says, where is Khalid? So the brother is answering to say, okay, you know, a simple answer. The prophet sallallahu says, ma mithlu Khalidin ya jahalul Islam. He says a man like Khalid, so intelligent so bright he's got such a mind he is an expert he's got a top brain he cannot be ignorant of the correctness of islam that's all he said the prophet peace be upon him is saying this man no matter what he's done he didn't harp on the fact that you know in uhud there were 70 people martyred and in this is what happened in the other war and khalid did this and nothing of that nature he's a leader he has hope he's waiting for the turning point that's a sunnah that's part of the seerah and it is consistent throughout the life of muhammad sallallahu absolutely all the time right up to the end he had hope including his uncle abu talib who was a man who did not accept the faith but the prophet peace be upon him on the deathbed of this man abu talib he goes to him and says oh my uncle utter one statement and i will fight your case on the day of judgment what was that hope 
waiting for a turning point, hoping for a turning point, even at the last moment. That's a sunnah. So Khalid ibn Walid, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says he will not be ignorant of it because he has such a top brain. He will, be, he will definitely be thinking about it. In the meantime, Allah alone knows what's happening to Khalid ibn Walid. He's considering. He says, no. These people are so dedicated. They're so kind. Yes, we fought them. Yes, I have the wrong perception of who they are. That's what's happening today on the globe as well. A lot of people don't know much about Islam. A lot of people look at it with skepticism because what do they hear? Exactly what Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira radiallahu anhu heard before Islam. He actually went out to fight the Muslims. And what happened? Because of the hope, because of the goodness, because of the kindness, because of the character and the conduct of the rest of the Muslimin and so on. He continued, meaning he started thinking about Islam. No way. This is a religion. It's a faith. But he had one problem. What was the problem? I've killed people. I've committed sin. I've committed so much. I've harmed. I've done. I don't think I'm going to be forgiven. It took him a bit of a while. He built the courage to come to Medina Munawwara. And when he came in, the Prophet, peace be upon him, knew what was happening. He knew, he had a feeling this man is coming in, he's going to declare his faith. But Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu did not declare his faith immediately. He had a question. He had a question to ask. What was the question? Oh messenger, I've done so much. What's going to happen to that? I've committed sin. You know what I did in Uhud and so on. The details. He says, what's going to happen to that? And the Prophet sallallahu says, Ya Khalid, inna al-Islam ya jubbu ma qabla. Oh Khalid, Islam... The fact that you are entering the fold will delete all the bad that you've done in the past. Guess what? The good is carried through. Subhanallah. The bad and the evil is deleted, wiped out, gone. Subhanallah. He says, he asked the question again. He got the same answer. He asked the question a third time. He got the same answer. Then he stretches his hand. He says, on that condition, I bear witness you are indeed the messenger of Allah. None worthy of worship besides Allah and you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was how Khalid ibn al-Walid entered the fold of Islam. Look at the beauty, look at the goodness. But did the Prophet peace be upon him say, no, that's an enemy. Allah Allah's curse on him. He's, he's, he's a right off. He's, it's over. We do that with Muslims. We do that with Muslims. This person is like this. That one is like that. This one is a goner. What are you talking about? It just depicts the condition of our own hearts. And this is why I say, be patient. Wait for the turning point in others.